We've covered a fair few Star Fox related starfighters in the past, the R-Wing 1 and 2, the Wolfen 1 and 2, and all the variants of the ship line in between. But today I want to go over the most notable ship in the Star Fox universe, that being the Great Fox. The Great Fox isn't like all the other ships that we've covered before, those were just fighters, but this will be a Dreadnought class carrier battleship flagship that has an awful lot of lore behind it. So if you're a fan of the Star Fox series, but not really much into the lore, then this might be an interesting video for you. We'll break down its specs, look at any variants it has, and the lore behind the gigantic vessel. This will be the third and final episode of the Star Fox series. We were initially only going to make one of these videos, but with the support that you've given us with the Arwing and Wolfen videos, we thought we'd close this off as a trilogy. Seriously, we didn't expect to even hit 10,000 views on either of them since it's such a seriously small niche, so this one wouldn't have been possible without your help. Thank you. But before we dive into it, my question of the day is, what is your favorite Star Fox game in the series? For me, I'm actually going to go off on an unpopular opinion here and say Star Fox Adventures. I really enjoyed Star Fox 64 a lot, don't get me wrong, but when I was younger, I was really into the Zelda-esque games, so Star Fox Adventure really spoke to me. Plus, some of the new characters introduced were really interesting. Not only that, the N64 beta builds were also very intriguing as well, because it came out on the GameCube when it actually released. But what about you? Let me know your games in the comments down below. I read all your messages and try to reply to some of you too. Okay, so the Great Fox, developed by Space Dynamics Limited, came in at 890 by 375 space meters, powered by hydrogen and three plasma engines. Despite its stronger engines compared to the R Wing, its top speed only comes in at 1.4 max speed in atmosphere, rather than the R Wing's four, but it trades out its top speed for the ability to warp drive to other planets with ease. However, this is only according to the LILAC data link found in the Star Fox 64 strategy guide, as well as the Nintendo Power magazine. Despite it being somewhat of a carrier, it comes with two heavy laser cannons that can create a huge barrage of energy shots that can challenge various carriers and frigates, as seen in the Area 6 defense station level in Star Fox 64. You hear the astromech Rob 64 confirm assistance against the huge Andros fleet and its heavy laser cannons hitting the bridges of said ships. The laser shots are yellow to indicate their sheer strength. Whilst there isn't much information on the targeting system, it is assumed to either have a single or dual reticle lock. Whilst it's not seen often, the angle of the laser cannons from the Great Fox suggests the cannons are on a gimbal system that can be controlled manually or from the Rob 64 astromech. It has a small hangar bay resting at the bottom center of the ship, just below the laser cannons. From this hangar bay, it can deploy up to four R-wings at a time and can assist damaged R-wings with repairs and supplies of smart bombs and power to its laser cannons insanely fast making it a credible ship when in a pinch. But R-Wings are not the only thing it can deploy. Its armament holds things such as R-Wings, Landmasters, Blue Marines, Gyro Wings and more. And judging by the Aquas Oceans level opening cutscene, it is also buoyant, as the hangar bay can safely rest underwater when deploying its Blue Marines. But did you know, whilst it's mostly known for its appearance in Star Fox 64, its size is actually incorrect in the game. Due to graphical limitations of the N64, the Great Fox was scaled down down to keep performance. Star Fox Adventures and Star Fox Assault shows the Great Fox's true size thanks to the GameCube being the first console to be capable of rendering something that big. Whilst the Great Fox is a powerful, highly defensible flagship, it stays out of most missions due to it adding too much unnecessary risk, as it is such an important asset to the Star Fox team. Again, despite its very impressive defenses, its shields are weak against physical missile slash torpedo attacks, making it very vulnerable in specific situations. But it will bring in additional firepower when the R-Wings are outmatched in numbers. The Great Fox has a lot of lore behind it also. According to the Star Fox 64 strategy guide, James McCloud, Fox's father, took out a gigantic 80-year loan on the aircraft. But due to his unfortunate passing, the loan was never fully repaid and was passed on to Fox, as well as the team. Whilst Fox never publicly mentioned this, for reasons unknown, he is still happy to use some of his freelance winnings and payouts to pay for the loan. And judging by how expensive the Star Fox team's invoices are, as shown at the ending of Star Fox 64, he's still repaying it. So that must be one extremely expensive flagship. My ultra rough guess on how many credits the vessel's worth? I'd say anywhere between 450,000 to 500,000 credits. But how much the credits are actually worth? 
Well, that's up to you. I'm putting it more against the dollar worth. That also includes the price of Rob 64, which was commissioned alongside the ship and is hardwired into the ship's primary computer. So good catch from James there. In Star Fox Adventures, the Great Fox began to really suffer. In the years following the defeat of Andros in the Lilac Wars, the Great Fox soon fell into a state of disrepair. And due to a lack of funds coming in from the Star Fox team, due to freelance work becoming harder to come by due to the peace settling in after Andros's demise, the Great Fox began to deteriorate and its engine power decreasing considerably to the point where the ship could only drift via boosters. However, with Fox defeating the resurrection of Andros at the planet Soria in the Lilac system, the team was able to use its massive reward money from General Pepper to pay off the remainder of the loan as well as overhaul the worn out Great Fox, making it appear sleeker and futuristic in all its interiors. The hangar bay got the biggest upgrade as it was able to perform long range deployment of starfighters and ground units directly to a planet's surface. However, the reticle systems got no upgrades whatsoever, as Fox mentioned his frustrations with the vessel as it was unable to lock onto targets at a distance. As the Aproid invasion era began in Star Fox Assault, the Great Fox unfortunately went on its final mission. During a conflict at the Aproid homeworld, it was attacked by Aproid crawlers, and it had completely infected the entire ship with its machine assimilating aliens. Before the Great Fox was compromised, it was able to utilize all of its power to its heavy laser cannons, destroying the planet's anti-laser shield generator and spearhead crashing into the planet's final defenses, before eliminating Pepe and the ship itself, marking the end of a fantastic The Great Fox. The Great Fox did have a variant, however. During the post aproid era in the game Star Fox Command, the Star Fox team purchased a decommissioned Canarian Assault Cruiser, which was christened as the new Great Fox. It looked vastly different than its predecessor and was significantly weaker, as the decommissioned variant had all of its weapons and military-grade hardware stripped, leaving just a basic hull with minimal shielding. The reason for this was the Star Fox team being in a less favorable financial position, meaning that they really needed to rely on more cost-effective flagships. This was the last game in the Star Fox series that continued the timeline, as Star Fox Guard in 2016 was simply a tower defense minigame and Star Fox Zero coming out in the same year was a reimagining or reboot of the Star Fox 64 series. Star Fox 2 came out in the following year, but that was an unreleased SNES game that came out on the Super NES Mini, so it's considered a predecessor beyond that. So unfortunately, Star Fox has had no storyline updates for over 16 years, meaning we have no information on whether the Star Fox team was able to recommission another incredible flagship that was the Great Fox. And with the Star Fox Zero being a reboot, we're not sure if we'll see any more continuation. We'll just have to wait and see. But that does conclude the end of our video. What do you think of the Great Fox? And what did you think about the lore after watching our video? Let us know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below, alongside our question of the day, which is, what is your favorite Star Fox game in the series? Really interested to hear everything you guys have to say. And of course, this is our final Star Fox video for now. So if you want to see the previous two videos on the series where we cover the R-Wing and the Wolf and 2, click the top right info card or the link in the description to the playlist. And hey, if this video performs really well, we might consider making more. Again, we'll have to just see how well this video will do. But other than that, I've been Charlie, you've been watching X2, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.